So the last uh, video that we looked at introduced this picture and introduced this budget constraint down here. Okay, We can graph this budget constraint on the same figure that we graph food and shelter. Let's make a new one just to keep things clean. But we essentially have F on the vertical axis and S on the horizontal one. So we just need to rearrange this budget constraint to give us that kind of, to solve for F basically. So if we're gonna do that, we can subtract PS times S from both sides. Step one, then we can divide everything by PF. They cancel over here and we end up with this equation that Y divided by PF minus PS over PF times S is greater than or equal to F, okay? This is our budget constraint expressed in a different way. You know, it's the same equation, but we've just rearranged it. So let's graph that, okay? So suppose S is uh, zero, then that means Y over PF is the biggest, is the most food we can possibly get because food has to be less than whatever's on the left-hand side. So we can say Y divided by PF. And that makes sense. If you take all of your income, Y, and spend it on food, then you divide your income by the price of food, that tells you how much food you can get. Conversely, down in this corner over here, we're going to have Y divided by PS. Okay. Now what happens if we plug that in for S? PS divided by PF times Y over PS. The PS is canceled and we end up with Y over PF. And then we have Y over PF minus Y over PF, which is zero. And that tells us that if you spend all your money on shelter, you can't afford any food. Makes sense. And because the amount of food we buy has to be less than this amount, we can afford anything that's down here. And we could do a similar argument to say you can afford anything over here. So this is the most shelter you can buy if you bought only shelter, but you can also just choose to buy less. And because it's a linear equation, we can connect these two. And technically, our guy can afford any bundle of food and shelter that's in this shaded area, okay? This is his, uh, I think this is actually called the feasible set. This is all the amount of food, all the combinations of food and shelter that our uh, person can afford. So they have to choose from among this set which one they are going to buy. And one thing that we can say without knowing anything else about their preferences is that if food and shelter are the only things that this person cares about, then they're going to be on this line instead of in this shaded area. And that's because of non-satiation. If you're inside, if you're in this sort of shaded area, like suppose you were here, well that means you could have more food and more shelter without giving anything up except money, but money isn't, in this example, the only thing you can spend money on is food and shelter. It has no inherent value, and so you wouldn't want to do that. You'd keep spending more of it. So non-satiation implies that you're going to be on the edge here, and that implies that this budget constraint is binding, okay? What does that mean? We can replace this uh, greater than or equal to with just an equal to. You're gonna spend all your money, okay? I see I covered myself up here. This is saying uh, equals F, okay? Another way to put it is Y is gonna be equal to the amount you spend, okay? The amount of money you have is gonna be fully spent in this economy because the only things to buy are food and shelter. You could, of course, save your money. Just wait for a later unit and we'll introduce that.